So this is half of a lightning talk duel between uh, James McNellis and I. He, uh, he was commenting on, on Twitter about uh, signed, unsigned, and, and I took a contrary position. And I said, well, let's, let's fight this out at lightning talks at CPPCon. And so you're going to see mine tonight. I'm not sure when James has scheduled his. We will uh, we'll find that out in the future. So the question is, what does this code do? And because we are pressed for time, I want to tell you what it's going to compare a signed and an unsigned integer. And so we have some questions. The first is, is this going to compile? And yeah, it, it compiles. But is it uh, perhaps undefined behavior? No, it's not undefined behavior. But the question is, well, what's it going to, what's it going to do? What is it going to print? It's going to print else. Uh, a is not less than B. Well, see, this is the thing. I think even James McNellis would understand that negative one is less than one. So, um, so this is kind of the question. Um, is, you know, is, is this what you expected? Now, we all know that C++ programmers are an amazingly good-looking group, but more than that, they're in the top half of the intelligence pool, and you are all at CppCon, so you're even higher up. So you probably did expect this. But that's not the question we have to go after. The question is, uh, what will other programmers expect? What will your coworkers expect? Or any random sample of the 4.4 million C++ programmers on the planet? What are they going to expect? And the problem is that most of them are going to be surprised by the unsigned integer promotion rules. So what kind of advice um, can we give them? What's the guideline that's going to help? Well, we could give them a guideline like that, but <laughs> I'm not really going to go along with that, so we're not going to do that. So we could do that. That's not really that much better, is it? Um, OK, well, I, I believe strongly in the power of positive thinking, but I don't think, uh, I don't think we're going to be able to write non-trivial applications that never use negative numbers. So how about don't do math on unsigned types? Well, this was actually advice that I got from an acknowledged C++ expert when I was asking about this issue and what he thought about it. And this is what he said. He, he said, this was a private conversation, and he said, well, it's an unsigned type. You don't do math on it. Um, or we could say, don't, mixed, don't mix signed and unsigned, because that's, that's the real issue here, right? It's the, it's the promotion rules. But the problem is, if you have them in the same application, they're going to get mixed. And so the question is, can you have an application entirely made up of unsigned types? And, and I think that's back to the same rule of not using negative numbers. So here's my guideline. Here's my recommendation to you. And that is, don't use unsigned for quantities. So what does that mean? Does that mean don't use unsigned? I mean, isn't, aren't integers quantities? Well, it doesn't really mean that. Treat it like this. Unsigned means it's a, it's a bit mask. Right? So that means what? That means uh, low-level hardware operations. That means uh, bitwise logical operations. That means you could use them for, say, character sets, because a bit represents a character. Right? Uh, maybe you have a data structure that's made of a bits, like a bitmap or a big int. Those are all perfectly good way, reasons to use uh, your bitmask object or your unsigned. But don't use things where you're going to compare magnitudes or where you're going to perform mathematical operations, because these things are going to have unexpected promotion rules. So I'm hearing all, of course, people are going to be argumentative. I mean, there's a James McNullis in every audience. So, <laughs> so people are going to say, wait a minute, this is so descriptive. It tells me things, right? communicates about my AI. It came back. Thank you, James. Um, so people would say, this is a way, a, an excellent way of documenting my API. And I would say, no, documentation is a good way to communicate something about your API. Using things like unsigned types to communicate that it would be a bug if it were negative is, in fact, hiding those bugs. If your code actually returned a negative number because of a bug in your code and it got cast to an unsigned, you would not see that bug. You would be hiding the bug rather than revealing the bug, which is what we would like to see. So what about this? Say, using unsigned types gives me a greater range of, of, of positive values. I just don't buy it. 
Uh, if you need that extra bit, you're almost certainly going to eventually overrun that extra bit. A sneeze puts you overrun. We don't want that, so just use a larger data type. Uh, what about this? The standard library used unsigned types. Un un size t is required to be unsigned all over the place. And that's, that's true. You, you got me. It does. Um, because they had, to, they had to have a way that, you know, when you return malloc, you might want to malloc half the size of your address space in a single call, because that's the kind of thing we do all the time. Um, so the standard requires that size t be unsigned. That's an ugly wart. We may fix it in, you know, STD2, but that's not the point. The point is that if you're programming, uh, if you can't program in a language with ugly warts, maybe C++ isn't the language you should be programming in. So, um, so here are my recommendations. Uh, select the types for the operations they support, not the range of values. Uh, don't use unsigned types in your API. This hides bugs. And don't use unsigned for quantities. Don't use unsigned for quantities. Thank you very much.